Welcome to Crew Life at Sea podcast. Here, we will share the skills you need to make your experience and adventure out at sea a success. Hear inspiring stories from experienced crew from all diversities. Gain knowledge and know your rights. Be part of the crew, Life at Sea, and let's welcome your host, Raymond Crystal. Welcome to Crew Life at Sea, the only place where you can find useful information, advice, insights, and resources to help inspire you to take that next step in working on a cruise ship. Well, you know, I've been doing this for quite a while now, so I thought it's time that we get a new hire and see how it feels to be hired on board a cruise ship and the experiences that they went through as a new hire. All these podcasts that I've had are all from experienced people from well off from 5 to 30 years of experience. And today I have with me Preston, who's a new hire, and he's going to tell us a little bit about his experience when he got hired. Well, this is actually his first contract and see what he's been going through and his process of getting here and his experience on board. Hello, Preston. How are you? What's up, guys? I'm good in yourself. Good. How are you doing, bro? I'm good. Can't complain. Okay, Thanks. so let's uh, first tell the people where you're from. So I'm from Durban in South Africa. Durban, South Africa. Yes. Right. And this is your first contract. And it's been an unbelievable adventure for you to must have got to this far in your life in to get in on a ship because i'm sure you've always wanted to work on yes, a ship or for some reason so could you tell me a little bit of the experience of, from how you got to from durban to here okay so i used to work at a university i was employed as a personal trainer and massage therapist and during the course of the year uh, steiner the company that i'm working for attended our campus to do a presentation about how to get on ship how to get on work on board ah. and yeah so they did a presentation for us and I just took down their details and then I contacted them they set up an interview for me and I attended the interview hmm. got through the interview and then yeah next thing I know I'm on board so you only learned how to come at sea was because of this those people that came to your place yes. if it wasn't for them you would never have nope taken up this offer right nope. wow that's yeah. that's lucky for you eh? So how was the hiring process and how did you go through that? Very simple actually. They just, you just answer a few questions. You talk about yourself and then you, do, depending on the position that you are in, you do a practical and yeah, that's it. So they, did they call you or once you, you email them and then you got to reply through email? And then was it an interview? Or yes, it was an interview process. So you just have to contact them via email. Yeah. They set up the dates depending on your location in South Africa. And then you attend the interview. Uh, it's not just you, it's a group of people at a time, so you have to do a lot of public speaking. And then you do your practical test or your practical examination, and then within a few hours they let you know if you're successful or not. Oh, well, lucky yep. you. Sometimes it takes them weeks, sometimes yes. even months. Sometimes you don't even hear back from them. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Did you have to do any sort of training before you got the job? Uh, yes, yeah, so once you get through to uh, from the interview, you do a, well, for me, it was a fitness uh, position so you have to do a three week training course in Cape Town which was absolutely grueling <laughs> you have three hours of sleep every day Monday to Sunday and yeah once you completed that then you are ready to come on board why so such a hectic training schedule uh, it's a lot of work in a short period of time so you do oh. seminars you do yoga Pilates spinning boot camp personal training uh, you good feet so there's a lot of stuff to cover within the three weeks. Did you have to pay any sort of fees? Um, for training, yes, you did. What was the cost of it? I think, well, all in all, my cost to get on board came to close to 50K. It's 50,000 Rand. So what? in dollars, that is, let's say, just about four and a half thousand dollars. So give us a rundown on all of that. Because I'm sure they want to know what you Okay, so want. I spent it on obviously paperwork, uh, the training fees, uh, accommodation, food for the three weeks, transportation, and yeah. Air tickets? No, no. So Steiner covers your air tickets to the ship, and once you completed your contract, they pay for your flights back home. 
but this is but really although there is a lot of hidden costs that they yeah. don't inform you about during the interview oh. process and the process on for of you getting on board oh. but you got to remember that this is only for your for your position right uh, as yes. the, as yes. the fitness instructor other positions is not that hectic so don't uh, think that yeah, it's so for everybody yeah. it's just his specific job uh, <clears throat> excuse me can you tell me uh, how you got your visa and your medical aid sorted out Okay, so my visa, they provided the documentation. We mm -hmm. just had to show up uh, to the embassy. And yeah, it literally took me 15 minutes to get everything approved. And my visa took about two weeks to get to me. Visa, you yeah. mean medical? My to visa. get the visa and the medical? The medical, we just had to show up to one of two doctors in South Africa. So one was in Cape Town and one was in Durban. And that also took about half an hour. You just do a urine test, you fill out like 60 pages of documents, which was the <laughs> longest process of the entire medical. And then you do a few practical assessments of your joints, and then that was it. You also do uh, drug testing? Uh, yes, so that's from your urine test. Yes. And then I they give blood. you... You didn't do blood? No, blood? no blood. What? Um, Normally we have to do blood for drug oh, tests. Yeah, was there I blood? Maybe yeah, there was. Be, maybe. Must maybe, be because yeah. you can't pick up quite a few things. It must be blood. Some okay. of them is blood. And there was two vaccines. So um, MMR, measles, yeah, mumps, and rubella and yellow a fever, yellow, yellow fever. Yellow fever, yeah. So... You and see, that was also our cost, the yeah, medical. But you see, some companies you... You bring your medical receipts and they reimburse yes. you, some companies, I don't know. <coughs> the only thing they reimbursed me was for my visa and visa, that was yes, just half a of it basically, half, yeah. not the full amount. So you get home, you see an email from your agent, you open it, there are hundreds of attachments, you start to open all of them one by one. Explain to me the feeling that you're going through when you do this. So firstly it was excitement because you're happy, you want to get on board, yeah, yeah, exactly. But then you become overwhelmed, like you said, with those hundreds of pages and documents that you have to open and read through. And there's a lot of information. You just have to take your time, read each one very carefully, and then you follow instructions. But yeah, like I said, there's a lot of documentation. Yeah, and a lot of emailing back and forth yes. for like a couple of days, nonstop. Yeah. Yeah. Emails are flooded. So a tip, do not delete your emails as they come <laughs> along. Just keep them because you, I guarantee you, you will need them along the way. So you're preparing your luggage. How was that for you? How did you prepare for that? Uh, for me, it's simple because I'm good with packing. So I actually packed a few days before I leave. So I was, yeah, I was prepared. Mm, okay, it's 11 o'clock. You still haven't had an inch of sleep. You just can't fall asleep. You know that tomorrow you're taking a flight to some far off destination uh, to start this new adventure that you have found. Yes. Tell me the feeling and what you went through and the, the morning that you woke up to leave. Okay, it was a bit of excitement and again overwhelmed because initially I was supposed to leave on a Thursday to okay. a particular ship and then on the Sunday before they called me and said no I have another ship that I need to go on and but I need to leave in two days time two days yes wow. so even though I was packed uh, they didn't give me a specific time or date they just said within two days so the day that I had to leave they phoned me that particular morning so I wasn't ready, I didn't <laughs> shave, I didn't take out my clothes to that I was going to wear on the day, even though I was packed. Uh, yeah, so it was all a rush in the morning, and I didn't even get to say goodbye to my family properly, it was just my immediate family. And yeah, I had to rush to the airport within one hour, or one and a half hours, and I live an hour away from the airport. Wow, you really had a tough time with this one, yeah. it was like out of the blue, eh? Yep, absolutely. And you'll do whatever it takes, eh? Yes. That's why you're here. Yep. <laughs> So it's not that easy. You could uh, wait for a couple of weeks or months or all of a sudden they give you a call and yes. hey, you're leaving in like six hours, get ready. Um, yep. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <clears throat> so you get to this hotel, you've checked in. Stop, I didn't get a hotel. <laughs> <laughs> I was yeah. the lucky few that did not get a hotel well, because seeing that I had to leave on the day, they phoned me on the day, it was an emergency flight. It was the only flight to get to the ship. So I flew 30 hours from Durban, South Africa, all the way to Bogota, Colombia. Okay. A 30 hour flight. So I reached Colombia at half past nine at night, looking like a zombie. <laughs> so I had to find a tiny little bathroom at the airport. I had to shave, I had to freshen up, change into my suit, and then go straight to the ship. 
suit. Yeah, just to let you know, this guy Preston is very petite and you know. No, no. You know fitness, <laughs> it's one good. one of the requirements of Steiner. You have to <laughs> show up with your suit. And he's uh, showing up in his suit and looking all <laughs> snazzy. <laughs> so your travel experience wasn't that good, eh? I didn't enjoy it. Although the flights were good, in particular the food was good as well. Uh, but 30 hours, yeah, it's not playing. Yeah, it's unfortunate because mostly when you travel on your new hire or anybody, they always put you in a hotel, hotel at least yes. one night so yep. you can recover, you know, yeah. shave, shower, be fresh for the next morning. But unlucky for some, eh? Yep. What was your experience when you entered the ship and you were welcomed? Just or were you not welcomed? <laughs> uh, I was welcomed by the security. Okay. Because that was the first person I saw. It, could, it was at night. It was at half past nine at night. Oh, so there wasn't a lot of people tough around. Situation, yep. Buddy. yep. Uh, so the first person that I met was the HR manager. She okay. welcomed me like everyone normally welcomes somebody mm -hmm. arriving. Mm -hmm. And then I met my manager. My first manager, actually I had two managers on the day because there was a new manager joining at the same time as me okay. and she was also from South Africa. So yep, just met, introduced each other and then we filled out even more documentation. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Then I had to hand in my passport and Siemens book and then they showed me to my cabin. Then they offered me something to eat but I refused because I just wanted to go and sleep. So, <laughs> I went so, to my cabin. <laughs> so on a normal situation, you would get to the ship earlier at yes. like 8, 9, 10 in the morning. You'd with go, a bunch of other people. Yes, with yes. a bunch of other people. New not recruits. Alone. Yep. <laughs> you would get to the ship. You'd be welcomed. You'd be shown around the ship yep, to yep. all the locations, where to go. Plus, I had to walk by myself from the entrance of the port or the, yeah, the harbor to the ship because it was late at night. So the port agent wasn't around to escort me to the ship so you had to take your own luggage my own luggage but luckily there was a bus that passed me so i just hopped onto the bus met two guests that were returning from shore mm -hmm. so i spoke to them on the way and wow. yeah lucky you man but you're still very unlucky yeah so, what can you do a normal situation <laughs> your luggage gets taken on the ship for you okay you get shown around you get your you go to get your uniforms you can have a lunch and then you got to do these safety familiarization i also didn't get my uniform i had to use my personal clothing for two weeks until my uniform arrived because oh. at training when you're supposed to get your uniforms they did not have my size okay so they said they were going to post it to the ship <laughs> guys this is a one in a million and i hope you're enjoying this because yep. <laughs> it does happen uh, I can just be prepared for yeah, any, any any situation yeah, even when you travel it's happened to me quite a bit also but this is a very unique situation which is excellent to to hear about so yeah and you get your uniforms if for some and some for not yeah. for some <laughs> others but anyway <laughs> and then you go have a couple of hours rest and then you do your training and then you start work but uh, with Preston straight to bed and the next day and I had to wake up at six and well not wake up at six I had to start work at six not actual work I just had to show up to the spa for them to show me around introduce me to people but yeah but it, it. so then how the next day did you get around the ship if you don't know where the hell you were going nobody showed you around so how was it for you the next morning uh, they, uh, my new manager came and picked me up okay and then I went to the spa and then they started showing me around. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you the next day. So what came into your mind when you saw your cabin that night and the toilet? Or well, maybe you didn't even get to see it because you were so <laughs> Straight tired. to the bed, straight to bed. Okay, well, when you really Okay, focused? so when I entered, uh, my roommate wasn't there because he works late shifts, yes. apparently. Uh, and I obviously have to get the top bunk because all new recruits obviously get the top yeah, bunk. Yeah, well, whoever's leaving, if they're on top, they quickly yeah, jump, they to jump, the up, jump to yeah. the bottom. Yeah, they jump to the bottom. And I didn't have any sheets, pillowcases, or oh. duvet covers, so I don't know how old those pillows and mattresses were. I just had to sleep on top of it because I was that tired. And yeah, that was it. It was pretty small, but the lights were off and I didn't care about anything else besides my sleep. But when you came to the next couple of days, what did you think of the cabin? It was pretty decent. It wasn't as small as I thought it would have been. Uh, the bathrooms are pretty small though. Uh, if you have a shower and somebody is using the toilet, let's just say they'll get splashed. <laughs> it's like uh, one foot in yep. to the toilet, one foot to the basin, one exactly. foot out. So yep. that's how small it is. But all in all, it's a pretty decent uh, cabin. I have a pothole, so that's also good. Yeah, lucky.
you got a bit of luck yep. somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> so at sea, we have to learn a lot about safety. It's a huge factor nowadays. Tell me your first time experience when you had to do these training courses on board and what did you have to think about that? Well, I was pretty used to it because back at our fitness training in South Africa, we did a lot of, well, we had to do advanced sea survival. So within that two weeks, we did a lot of safety training that they actually cover on board. So I was already... So you did your STCW95 yes, before you right. came on board. Uh, you did it in... Where was it in Cape Town? At uh, the Durban, Christian it, eh? Barnard Harbour. Oh, okay. Yes, yes. Christian Barnard Harbour. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. They, 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 they're not bad, these guys back there. Yep. So tell me about what do you think of the food on board and the layout? Absolute cuck. <laughs> Straight so, to the core. Good ingredients good combinations just horrible preparations so it might be good for certain people but for for me it wasn't because I'm not used to eating like oily salty food so yeah. based on those aspects I don't yeah, yeah and also because they desserts are good though yeah, yeah of course you're a dessert lover this guy yes. every night he's got a new dessert he's got six desserts and he's a fitness instructor I don't understand he's got like a don't deprive yourselves eat in moderation you got like an eight pack where does the sugar go High metabolism. <laughs> yeah, no. I walk minimum 30,000 yeah, steps okay, on no board this small vessel. So no, no. Wait till you get older. The sugar's going to kick in, my boy. You know, sugar is a killer. Enjoy it while you can. Yeah, so this guy's the, the sugar king uh, dessert man. Every <laughs> night he's got a dessert and we all look at him like, what? Sugar king dessert uh, man. <laughs> yeah, man. He's the dessert king. So I wanted to ask you... What are the positive feedbacks would you offer towards people out there that are trying to get on this line of work besides eating chocolate cake? <laughs> <laughs> Every day you're in a new port or a new place, so your views are different. You meet new people of different backgrounds every week. So, And everyone is like-minded on board who works, so you get along with all the crew. So you can't complain with that. You get to travel while making money and providing a service that you have a passion for. Yeah. So, seeing these couple ports that you've seen recently, which one is your favorite? So, I would say Gustavia, St. Bart's. Beautiful. That's Absolutely wild. beautiful. Amazing yes. places. If I could get a place to stay and live, maybe I would Saint live there, But it's just so expensive. Yep. And it's all in Euros too. Yeah. yeah. Did you go to the Shell Beach? I did not. You're lucky. <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful, but... Uh, it's I was window shopping. Of all the uh, high-end shops, yeah. Dolce & Gabbana. Yeah, Fendi, Louis Vuitton. All yep. big name brands. So they Especially the watches. I'm yeah. a watch lover. So. Yeah. But they have this beach there called Shell Beach. All the crew go there. Yep. There's this beach full of shells. And people <laughs> lay on shells while they're at the beach. It's a bit crazy, but I don't know why you want to go lay on shells. There's so many other beautiful beaches there. It's different. <laughs> yep. So, the big question I ask everybody, and you're new to the sea, so I'm not sure if you have one, but let's see. Tell me your most shocking thing that you've ever encountered at sea in your short time right now. Okay, so within my wealth of knowledge, within my three months on board, okay. the most shocking thing that I've experienced has to deal with me, or it incorporates me. Now, I'm a fitness professional as well as a massage therapist on board. Mm -hmm. So the one day, uh, I had to do a massage, 75 minute Swedish massage okay. on a guy on a dude and I actually met him a few days before that on embarkation day so we had a long conversation so anyway I met him took him into the massage room for a consultation after the consultation told him okay see you in a few moments you get undressed and lay on the bed so I entered the room again when I entered he was butt naked <laughs> Okay, you did have a sheet over him, half half covered. Okay. And then he says, "Okay, you want minimal covering." Now we do have a sheet and a thicker duvet that covers Jeez, the guest. Actually, something that's like you can have that. Yeah, yeah. So all I did was remove the thicker duvet, and I left the sheet on. And then he says, "I am so glad. Or I'm so happy to be on your bed." So <laughs> now I just assumed, okay, he prefers a male because you. Sorry, it wasn't a Swedish massage. It was a deep tissue massage. Okay. So I assumed you wanted deep pressure from a male to get into the muscles. Okay. So I said, okay, good, great. So we began with the massage. So as I was doing the back sequence, I moved on to his arm. 
and suddenly I feel his hand on my thigh. Oh my gosh. Now at first I assumed okay his hand just fell off the bed because the beds are a little narrow. So I continued to massage. But then I felt his hand fondling my thigh again. <laughs> and then at first I kept quiet because I was shocked. I didn't know what, what was happening. And then he continued to fondle my thigh. And then I said, okay, excuse me, sir, I don't feel comfortable with this. So he picked up his head and he said, excuse me. I said, I don't feel comfortable with this. And then he said, okay, he's sorry. So I continued with the massage. You even continued? Yeah. Come on. Business is business. Of course, okay. So eventually it was time to flip him over. <laughs> I don't even Considering that he was naked. <laughs> there was something shooting up. Yeah. Oh my God. Out the sheet. And then he says, okay, I'm sorry if I make you feel uncomfortable. Now, at that time, what can I do? I can either walk out or just cover him and continue with the treatment. When he turned over, the, the sheet fall off? No, the sheet was like, okay, it was like half, half oh, off, and half on. And he it. just lay there, like oh, nothing God, happened. He's waiting for you to do something. Yeah, well, yeah, of uh, course. whatever. So anyway, I covered it. I said, okay, no, no worry, it's fine. And I continued with the treatment. But as I was <laughs> continuing with the treatment, it was making these arousing sounds. And oh, no, man. So eventually I cut the treatment down to 50 minutes and then, yeah, I walked out and I charged him for that. Wow. And then it was a big thing. I had to contact HR, uh, the hotel director, and they came to me and they didn't allow him back into the yeah, spa, back into the mentally facility. Disturbing yeah, for you, bro. because I had a few male guests after that, okay. and every time that they touched me or whatever, I had <laughs> flashbacks. <laughs> yeah. So it was I'm a bit hectic. It, man. And then, yeah, this HR, HR director from Steiner had to contact me from overseas just to make sure that I'm okay and stuff. But yeah. Yeah, it, it can be uh, mentally yeah. confusing, bro. It's not a nice thing to, because I mean, if I was in your situation, I don't know if I could have handled it as well as you did. I you did have other male well. guests that didn't go that far, but they did leave their email address over and oh, said, but yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. But you handled that very well. I mean, I know that happened up to me and a guy touched me. I'll be like, what the? <laughs> I would have walked out immediately yeah. and immediately stopped. He did give me a good tip though, so uh, luckily uh, I continue with the guitar. treatment. <laughs> <laughs> well, I must say I have not, did not expect that from a first timer, brother. Yeah, yeah. That was very, very interesting. <laughs> what can you Preston, do? Preston, I don't know, we'll have to find a name for you now. Uh, <laughs> a new hire. I'll have to work on this. <clears throat> I'll come back to you on this in a couple of days, bro. Yeah. So, <clears throat> this question has sea changed your life by any chance? I would say yes, it has. <laughs> <laughs> Dramatically. Dramatically. You know now how it is to be a masseuse. Yep, yep. But it does have its benefits. So, you do get to massage beautiful foreign young woman mm -hmm. uh, who's also uh, half naked. Uh, and but at the same time you get to massage old yes, men that's what I was and women as old, well. So hairy, wrinkled men yeah, and women. It's part of the job. It must be tough to There's pros massage and cons. old because it's hard to uh, like, Well my speciality is Swedish, so with the older people it's easier. So oh, you okay. don't apply too much of pressure. Yeah. So will you come back to the work at sea or do you think not? From what you Where I am at the moment, I would say no. Okay. When I first joined, mm -hmm. uh, I would have said yes because of the traveling, the people that you meet, every day is a new place that you're in. But then as you get into the job, uh, no, yeah. I'd say no because based on many the actual, yeah, yeah, I won't say what or mm -hmm. why, but because yeah. everyone's in the, Everyone's got yeah. different, their own opinion. That's why so I, I do this. I just so don't want to put anyone out. else down who's thinking no. of coming on board, but no. based on my... Well, look, from, from the beginning, what you've been through, bro, already, it's already a lot of people wouldn't have carried on because look at the situation that you went through. You, yeah. Your luggage, your late nights, the the quick calls, it was just too dramatically fast for you. There was no yeah. time to prepare or focus or anything. So I, I have no, you know, you never know what could happen. Maybe Other than that, it's absolutely perfect. Like I said, everyone is great. Um, ship life is great. The living conditions is good mm -hmm. and you get to travel and provide your service that you have a passion for is there anything else that you might think of or offer to the viewer out there to better help them in their journey to work at sea well for one they can come up onto your website because there is a wealth of information and There's knowledge a lot of knowledge a lot of information it's www 
crewlifeatsea.com. Amazing website, amazing site. You should definitely check it out. There's a lot of information, like we said, and it will certainly help you all and your journey to get on board. Yeah, thank you. It's what I've done is I've made all the resources from all over under one umbrella. And if you go there, everything is there for you. You just click and it's, you don't have to go to any other place. It's all under one spot, which is very, very easy. Yes, and like I said early on, when you get your emails, do not delete them <laughs> as soon as you finish reading them. Keep them until you're on board and then you can start deleting yeah. them. Well, Preston, thank you so much. It was an honor having you as Absolute my guest pleasure. as a first timer. Absolute pleasure. At least now we know that if we need a massage or anything, we can oh, come to you. Just don't get too handsy. <laughs> don't let your hands <laughs> run wild. <laughs> and thank you very much, brother. Keep well. Thanks, you too. Ciao. Pleasure. Thanks for listening to Crew Life at Sea podcast. Want any of your questions answered? Send us an email at crewlifeatseainfogroup.com.